In this video, I'm going to look at how the nervous system uses the principle of parallel processing to do its job more efficiently. So before we get into the actual nervous system, let me just give you a, a bit of an analogy or allegory so you get what all this process, parallel processing is all about. Imagine that you are in charge of running a ship. And the many things you need to do when you're running a ship, one is that people need food, and the ship needs to go in the right direction. So one thing you could do is to get this right, direction. One thing you could do is to have, so you've got food and navigation, two different jobs that need doing. You could say, well, I know one person, he, he or she is very competent and they can do both of them. So they need, they know that the food needs, we need a menu. We know that then we need to order the stuff and then, and then to cook and serve it. And they're also going to um, read the map every day and um, get their position and then steer a course for us. Okay, you could do it that way, but I think you'll agree that it might actually be better because each of these steps, although ordering needs, you need to know what the menu is and to cook, you need to actually have the ingredients available. So here you've got a clear flow of information going this way. These things can actually go on at the same time. So if you were to, at any point, take a clock at any point in time and have a look, see what's going on, you can find that these things are happening at the same time and that they're using a different email address. All right. Not sure whether you would actually use a different email address, but you get, you get the idea. So this, this then is what... Uh, these processes are going on in parallel, but they're being done by the same person. So what a sensible person would do is say, look, let's have these things completely done by two different people. So I have one person doing the food, another person taking care of the navigation. Right? So this is, this is what parallel processing is. So this aspect is parallel and this bit here these steps are being done in series. You get the idea. So now let's have a look at the nervous system. Let, let's make this a bit more bit more neural. Right? So imagine that my my brain Right in front of me, I can see a, a lorry driving past at a certain speed, and it's a blue lorry, okay? So in terms of vision, I would be interested in the shape. I would be interested in the color, and I might be interested in motion. I can do these in parallel. So for the first step in the shape might be to find out where are the edges. The next step might be then from that to work out the surfaces. And then from that to work out the 3D shape and figure out that it's a lorry. Colour, meantime, I might be interested in what wavelengths are present in the light. From that, I might work out the, from the, once given the illumination, figure out what colors there are and so on. For motion, I might want to know the position of the object now, and then want to do the change in the position, and from that work out movement. So here we've got parallel, three serial processes going on in parallel. And that's exactly what the nervous system does. You have cells which are responsive to shape. 
and not so much interested in color and motion, you get so much interested in color and you get in motion. Similarly, if you were to check at one point in time, you would find that these are happening at exactly the same time. And we don't use email addresses in the nervous system, but what we do is we have different neuronal pathways. And these are all completely separate pathways. So this is what parallel processing is. And what we find is in visual systems, we have going from the eye in the optic nerve, we have one map representing the image and another one right parallel to it representing motion. And this gets preserved in the brain until we finally get up. Let's connect maybe to an area processing right at the back, V1, and motion is then processed at a separate area. But of course, uh, and then these follow different pathways. So this is parallel processing in the visual system. We also have it in hearing, where frequency and the location of the sound are recorded separately, and so on, and so on. Just one last point. Going back now to my cruise ship. If I'm making a menu and I decide I've got to order the food, one thing I want to know is, well, how long are we going to be at sea for? So I would need then to find out some information from this stream to help me make my order. Similarly, I guess you could argue that the uh, person steering might want to know, have we got enough supplies to get there? So you get talk between the streams, and that's exactly what happens in, in the nervous system. You do have some talk between these different pathways, but they're still parallel. And then one last final point is we have divided in our analogy in a in the visual system, we talk about we divide the job up, if you like, into colour. So you cells go and figure out the colour. This pathway here, work out motion. And then other neurons deal with shape. That's how we divide it up. But in fact, the central nervous system might divide it up slightly differently. And that's how I represent this. Now, what I mean by that is you have one cell and you look at its response and you find that it's very interested in colour, but it's also about 10% of it represents shape. So that's what I mean by this line here, not quite matching up our division between colour and shape. Similarly, another neuron, you might find that it's maybe even 50% motion, but it's also strongly influenced by colour, and another bit by by shape. So the the way it breaks it up, the way these parallel processes break things up might not be the way we would do it ourselves. But then again, we're not as smart as our own brains. <laughs>